he's a man that hasn't put a foot wrong on the golf course. At 26, he's the best Indian golfer. Not just that, he's one of the best in Asia, having finished third on the Asian Tour Order of Merit in 2013. Anirban Lahiri came into the Ahmedabad Masters looking for his fourth straight victory in four starts on the PGTI and matched expectations setting a course record of 8 under on the very first day. Well, I definitely feel on top of my game, there's no doubt about that, but uh, and I, I think my best is yet to come. Uh, I think my best internationally and on the bigger stage, on the, in the bigger events with stronger fields is yet to come. But, uh, you know, I really enjoy playing on the PGTI and supporting it. I started playing my professional golf here, so, you know, I always come back and support it. And, and I really enjoy it, uh, maybe because I'm so relaxed and I enjoy it so much. You know, I've been playing well the last few weeks and, you know, I'm going to have to look to take the same attitude into my events abroad as well. A product of the Professional Golf Tour of India, Lahiri credits the PGTI for getting him where he is today. He is expected to win every time he tees off in India, but the pressure of expectations hasn't affected him at all. You know, I don't come to any event uh, expecting to win. I don't begin any round expecting to lead at the end of the round. I don't, I have no expectations really. I mean, I, when I'm here, I'm just really enjoying myself. I look at it as an opportunity to, you know, get a lot of tournament practice in before I, I go out and play on the bigger stage because obviously my focus has been that. Uh, you know, obviously I've, I've found uh, I've found a lot of birdies and I've found a good rhythm uh, when I've come out and played uh, on the PGTI. So uh, it's also taught me how to learn to win consistently and I think that's another a major advantage that I've gained from playing on the PGTI. I think if I had not played here and won uh, events, I would not have learned how to win events. Anirban has risen steadily in stature ever since turning professional in 2007. He won the PGTI Order of Merit in 2009. In 2011, he claimed a victory on the Asian Tour and repeated the feat in 2012 and 2013. From finishing 55th on the Asian Order of Merit in 2010, he rose to the third spot last year, earning prize money of over 517,000 US dollars in the process. The performance has catapulted Lahiri to the top amongst the Indians in the world rankings. He finished 2013 at 111, way above stalwarts like Jeev Milka Singh, Shiv Kapoor and Gaganjit Bhulla. Breaking into the top 100 would be the first step, I think. Now that I am on the cusp of it, uh, I have to make sure I keep my focus. Uh, but I think in, 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 in the bigger picture for me is, is going to try and break into the top 50 or 60. Beginning of the year, you know, I went back spoke to Vijay Devecha, my coach, and you know, every year we've told ourselves that we need to keep setting the bar higher. Uh, beginning of last season, we wanted to finish top five on the Asian Tour Order of Merit, uh, win multiple times. At least I managed to achieve one of them. So this year, I think, you know, it's, going, it's not going to be easy because there are not that many world ranking points on offer on the Asian Tour. But uh, nonetheless, that's, those are the opportunities I'll get, so I'll definitely try and move up. Another good year and Anirban could well be in reckoning for a spot in 2016 Rio Olympics. But for 2014, his focus is somewhere else. I would like to see myself win the order of merit. I think I finished 10th in 2012, 3rd in 2013. Uh, you know, winning the order of merit is a tall order, but I definitely think that I can play well enough to do so. Uh, I'll have to play really well, there's no doubt about that. I'll have to work really hard. Uh, to even come close to doing so. But I definitely believe I can. And the fact that I'm not playing in Europe or anywhere else is a big motivational factor for me to you know, go out and do that in Asia. So I would like to see myself there. Uh, but I would like, my, like to see myself more on the, on the European top. In seven years of professional golf, Lahiri has kept his eye on the ball and has judged the line of his career flawlessly. He's young but not a youngster anymore and the difference reflects not just in the results he produces. I, I think my attitude has improved uh, on the Asian tour as well. I'm a lot more relaxed and more comfortable. Probably comes from the fact that I'm more confident about my game. You know, a lot of times, especially as a rookie or in your initial years, you feel uncomfortable, you're not sure. Uh, and that can, you know, you can come in your way a lot. So I think I've started 
to learn how to step out of my own way. And my coach would always tell me as a as a 18, 19 year old that my biggest problem was I was standing in my own way. So you know I'm learning to do that by just taking a step back and and you know being a little more relaxed, a little more calm, and uh, I think that's the experience coming into play now. The self belief and positive thinking has made Lahiri a mature and rational young man who does not owe his success to any unfounded belief or superstition. Mm, I you know I used to be very very superstitious as a kid. I think superstition comes uh, easier to you when you know when you have more doubt in your head. And as a kid, you know, we, I used to never play with uh, balls numbered three. I only play with one, two, four. And then we all had lucky shirts and lucky trousers and lucky shoes and tees and caps and you know everything. Anything you played well in became lucky. But I think I've I've kind of moved on from that uh, in the last five or six years. Now I don't really care what I'm wearing or or what golf ball I'm playing with. Uh, but as long as I'm comfortable, I'm I'm happy. Anirban may have moved on, but superstition and lucky charms remain a part and parcel of golf, like any other sport. I don't play a ball number four. I do. I have a particular ball that I, number that I play on every day. Like first there would be a specific number, second there would be a specific number. So that's one. I have like. Tiger wears red and black last day, so I. Uh, he has his own superstition. I wear more or less like a lighter shade trouser and a darker shade da T-shirt to go with it. So superstitions. I used to have a few. I used to mark the ball with uh, uh, a coin, but it had to be heads. And then I I, I did away with that. Luckily, I, I now use my uh, marker, which sits on my hat. And um, I like to use ball number six and eight. I don't know why I don't like five, fives and I, I use high numbers, but I don't, I don't use fives and sevens much, and if, unless I have to. If I run, run out of six and eight, then I'll go to fives and sevens. I kind of like sixes and eights. Some call it superstition. Others call it a routine that only makes them feel a little more comfortable. I think that's what it is. Uh, but the thing is, uh, over the years, I, I've tried to do away with stuff like this because it really doesn't help. But you know, our golfers, even uh, other athletes, sportsmen, you know, we all have some stupid, stupid superstition. Quite often, superstitions fade away with age and experience, and what remains is belief in one's own ability. This game is not about luck. Like Arnold Palmer once said, uh, the harder I practice, the luckier I get. So if you don't practice hard, you're not going to get lucky at all. No, I consciously made an effort not to follow anything, but uh, because there are just so many different factors in this game. Uh, uh, that you could just completely get lost in them. But, uh, so I consciously made an effort not to follow anything. But uh, the only thing is that I wear um, uh, orange and blue on Sundays. I think that's just, um, and I, any, any Sikh would know that it's a symbol of uh, um, you know, the Khalsa. So I think wearing this just gives me a sense of pride and a sense of belonging. And while some stick with a profound belief in the Almighty, there are those who continue to live the charm life in the presence of the Almighty. If I had to have a lucky charm, I think it'd probably be my wife. She's not around, it's just brownie points. <laughs> Superstition or not, the rest of the field needed some inspired golf to catch up with Anirban, who was looking a runaway champion at the Ahmedabad Masters. Watch the ups and downs of the final round after this break.